In this video, we will analyze this single story storage warehouse steel frame using a finite element software and use the resulting forces to design a suitable simple bolted beam to column connection. Simple connection means that it carries no bending moment. You can refer to my previous video about types of connections and how to model them, link in the description below. The first step is to model the frame. Because we are concerned with designing a simple connection that carries no bending moments, we will make sure to model this by releasing the bending moment about the major axis at both member ends. This is done differently in different finite element software, but they all serve the same purpose. If you have no specifications at hand, or the loads on the buildings are unknown to you, please refer to ASCE 7 to extract the minimum required uniform and concentrated live loads as well as the dead load, snow load, wind load, seismic load, and many others. In this example, we will be using live loads, snow loads, and dead loads only. After running the analysis with the loads and load combinations, we first look at the moment diagram to confirm that the ends of the beams in fact have zero moment. Afterwards, we draw the shear diagram for all load combinations individually and extract the maximum shear value at the intersection between beam and column. We can then have a closer look at the member and extract the numerical value of shear at the member end, which in this case is 47.52 kips. Because the main purpose of this tutorial is the connection design, the beam and column sections have been pre-selected. W18 by 158 for the columns and W16 by 100 for the beams. The chosen angle is L2.5 by 2.5 by 0.5 inches thick that is 5 inches long. There is an angle on both sides of the beam and they are welded to the column and bolted to the web of the beam. We will start by extracting the web thickness of the connected beam. For that, we refer to Table 1-1 of the AISC Construction Manual. We can see that for beam size 16 by 100, the web thickness is 0.585 inches. Next step is to determine the bolt size, spacing, and edge distance. We will start with an initial guess of two 7 over 8 inch diameter bolts. From AISC specifications section J3.4, the minimum distance between bolt hole centers for standard holes should be 2 and 2 thirds of the bolt diameter. Additionally, the specifications provide a note that says a spacing of 3 times the bolt diameter is preferred, and that is what we will be using. This makes the spacing 2.625 inches. Because we want to keep the bolts equally spaced from the edges, the edge distance would be 1.1875 inches. From AISC table J3.4, we can find out the minimum required edge distance for a bolt size of 7 over 8 inches. Because the available edge distance is more than the minimum required, we could confirm the initial geometry and proceed to checking the strength. For that, we need the load per bolt, which is the total shear at the connection divided by the number of bolts, which gives 23.76 kips per bolt. Because there is an angle on both sides of the web, there are two planes for shear. In other words, the bolts are in double shear. To determine the strength of the bolts in shear, we refer to Table 7-1 of the AISC Construction Manual. Because at least one of the planes of shear will include the bolt thread, we choose thread condition N. And because the bolt is in double shear, we choose the loading condition D. And the column chosen will be the one under the bolt size 7 over 8 inches. We are using the LRFD design method and thus the strength of the bolt in shear is 48.7 kips. The bearing and tear out strengths due to bolt spacing can be found from table 7-4 in the AISC construction manual. 
The table also includes the minimum bolt spacing requirement we checked earlier. The spacing required for bearing to govern instead of tear out is 2.688 inches. Because we have standard holes, we choose the first row. We choose 58 KSI because the angle material is A36 steel. And because the bolt spacing we have is smaller than 2.688 but higher than the minimum required, we choose the strength corresponding to the minimum allowed spacing. It is also possible to interpolate between the strengths at minimum spacing and 3 inches of spacing. The strength 72.9 kips is for an inch of thickness of the connected material. However, the angle thickness is 0.5 inches. And because there are two angles per bolt, the strength is multiplied by two. So we end up with a strength of 72.9 kips. The strength of the web should also be checked, but the web has a different material than the angle with an ultimate strength of 65 KSI. And thus, the strength of the web is 81.7 kips per inch multiplied by the thickness of the web 0.585 which gives a strength of 47.8 kips. The web is weaker than the angles and thus it governs. The bearing and tear out strengths due to bolt edge distance can be found from table 7-5 in the AISC's construction manual. But because the bolt edge distance available is not in the tables, we continue to find the tear out strength using AISC specifications section J3.11, where the tear out strength is 1.2 times the clear distance between the bolt hole and the edge of the connected part, multiplied by the thickness of the connected part, multiplied by the ultimate strength of the connected part. The standard hole diameter for 7 over 8 inch bolts can be found in table J3.3 of the AISC specifications. The hole diameter is 15 over 16 inches. This makes LC equal to the following. The strength of the angle is therefore 50.112 kips. Again, here the strength is multiplied by 2 because we have two angles. And because the web has no free edges, the strength of the web does not need to be checked for tear out. The strength needs to be reduced by the reduction factor phi and the final strength is 37.58 kips. The strengths calculated are all greater than 23.76 kips per bolt, with the edge tear out strength being the most critical. However, the strength of the angle in shear still needs to be checked. The angle can fail in shear by either yield or rupture. The gross area required for yield strength is simply the thickness of the angle multiplied by its height. The net area required for rupture strength is the cross-section area minus the area of the holes which are enlarged by an additional 1 over 16 inches in diameter each. This gives a yield strength of 54 kips and a rupture strength of 51.4 kips. All available strengths are higher than the applied load of 23.76 kips and thus the connection is sufficient. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you for watching.